Hi guys, Aris, Hardware Busters. To address the medium PSU category needs, XPG released the Kiber line, which consists of three members with capacities ranging from 650 to 850 watt. I will look at the higher capacity member of the line in this video review, which achieves Cybernetics Platinum efficiency. With only 140 mm depth, the footprint is compact, allowing for an easy installation despite the fixed cables, which always make things harder. The cable line claims compatibility with the 8x version 3 spec, but uh, it is actually compatible with the 8x version 3.1 spec since the latter requires a lower hold-up period. It is weird, I know. Uh, in all years I have reviewed PSU, it is the first time that the newer spec is looser in a section than its predecessor. I believe the hold-up time period should uh, remain the same at 17 milliseconds and not drop at 12 milliseconds, giving more headroom to the PSU to survive ultra-short power cuts. With an uh, MSRP close to $110, the Kiber 850 is expensive given its capacity and the fact that it doesn't feature any modular cables. XPG will have a tough time selling PSUs with native cables at that price given that the Thermaltec GX3 non-modular models with similar capacity cost less at $90, but uh, I believe that eventually they will drop the price at least below $100. Cables. Uh, the high power cables are sleeved while the peripheral cables are flat. There are two EPS connectors on a single cable which could be uh, problematic. If the respective cable was modular and the PSU's capacity was higher, uh, I would strongly complain about that. The pair of PCI Express connectors are on a single cable and there are two peripheral cables with six SATA and two four pin Molex connectors. Since uh, this is a fixed cable PSU, XPG tried to keep the amount of cables at a minimum and I agree with that. Uh, thankfully all cables are long and the distance between all peripheral connectors is ideal at 150mm. Design internal. The OEM of this PSU is Channel Well Technology CWT, and the platform's code name is GPW which looks to be a cut-down GPX design. It uses a contemporary design, not popular so far at least. We find a full bridge topology on the primary side. I remember this uh, silent fetch from the Deep Cool Game Store DQM PSU review, which uses the GPX platform. Finding now a full bridge on a budget-oriented PSU is not that common. I would say, but CWT can use four lower cost uh, FETs instead of two more capable ones and more expensive. Uh, so this is why they chose a full bridge design instead of a half bridge one. Also, an LLC zonon converter is used to minimize energy losses. On the secondary side, we find the typical stuff, a synchronous uh, rectification scheme for 12 volt and a pair of DC-DC converters for the minor rays. CWT used good FETs on the secondary side to avoid any problems, but the caps don't belong to a recognized manufacturer. That said, Cheng X makes caps for all popular Japanese brands, including Rubicon and Semicon. The same goes for the bulk cap, which is by good brand, Tipo, but only rated at 85 degrees Celsius. Nevertheless, uh, it will probably not have a problem outliving the 5-year warranty if you don't use the PSU under extreme operating conditions. Probably uh, now with the drop in hold-up time requirements, brands will be able to use higher quality bulk ups since capacity will drop. I don't fully agree with that, but they will say we just follow Intel spec and that is all. The cooling fan is Matek. To, it's by Matek to keep the cost down. Hong Kong and Globe Fan products are more expensive and there is no room here for expensive parts. Uh, it claims that it uses a fluid dynamic bearing which would help it live more. Protection features. OCP is set high at 12V. I won't complain about 5V which needs to be strong enough to support ARGB but there is no point at all in such a high amperage at 3.3V. 
Another problem here is that the cold and hot OCP triggering points are almost identical. Normally OCP should be tighter in stressful conditions to protect the PSU effectively. On the other hand, OPP is notably lower at high temperatures but than at cold ones and uh, all other necessary protection features are present which is good of course. Performance. Load regulation is within 1% on all major rails so it is tight enough. I expected that given that there is no uh, there are no modular cables so there are no voltage drops on the connections. Ripple suppression is decent on all rails but 3.3 volt where it is mediocre especially at 115 volt input. The transfer response. The 3.3 volt rail performs badly here. The same goes for the 12 volt rail in the first test. Transient response in ATX version 3.x testing scenarios. The PSU passes all ATX version 3.1 transient response tests, but the 3.3 volt rail is right on the limit in the 200% load test. And some comparison graphs with the ATX version 3.1 transient response uh, test. I will provide only the 200% uh, graphs. The 12 volt rail drops low, especially uh, in this test, 200% low test, which is the worst. Given the fixed cables, which help since they minimize resistance compared to modular cables, expected better results here, but I guess the design, the GPW uh, affordable platform shows its limits here. Efficiency, normal light and super light loads. The platform achieves decent efficiency at normal loads, while there is room for improvement at light and super light loads. Uh, the average platform's efficiency is also at uh, decent levels. The PFC converter, on the other hand, needs tuning for higher performance. I noticed uh, recently that more and more brands don't pay so much attention to the PF power factor readings, especially at 230 volt. And I hope that through this testing and reviews, uh, things will eventually improve. Average noise output uh, exceeds 30 decibels, so I cannot call this PSU quiet. But for more details, let's check on the fan noise and speed maps. Uh, which are for 28 to 32 degrees Celsius and 150 volt input. The fan speed is kept low at up to 550 watt loads, but the 30 decibels mark is quickly passed with uh, 45 watt higher loads. With 660 watt and higher loads, noise is within the 35 to 45 decibels range. And lastly, high loads on the minor rails don't seem to affect the fan speed profile. The 12 volt rails load is what matters the most. Overall performance is not high, mostly because of the increased ripple and the not so good transient response. Remember that this is a, a budget PSU. It is not destined for users wanting top performance, but for users on tight budgets. Bottom line, uh, despite the tight enough load regulation, the XPG Kiber 850 doesn't impress with its overall performance because of the mediocre transient response and the not so good ripple suppression, especially at 3.3 volt. The platform's efficiency is decent, while the fan speed profile gets wild at higher loads, leading to increased noise output. In the protection features, which are of utmost importance, my objections are the high OSP triggering point at 3.3 volt and the identical triggering points between cold and hot conditions. OSP points should be lower under more stressful conditions, meaning high temperatures, to protect the PSU effectively. A strong asset of this unit is the ATX version 3.1 compatibility. The paradox here is that the unit is not ATX version 3 compatible as advertised because of the lower than 17 milliseconds hold up time. But the ATX version 3.1 spec is looser in this section, allowing to meet the corresponding requirement. From the moment the Kiber 850 only has native cables, it automatically moves to the ATX version 3.1 category without any hardware changes or modifications required. Talking about the native cables, I am unsure if many users will opt to buy uh, this unit with uh, a price tag of $110 or even $100. Uh, 
and uh, since with 10 or 15 dollars more you can buy a fully modular ATX version 3.x compliant unit like the Thermaltech GFT A3850. XPG should devise the price of the Kiber units in general if it wants to make them more competitive. Non-modular PSQs are for highly restricted budgets, definitely notably below the $100 price tag. Above that, users will prefer uh, in every day of the week a fully modular PSU. You can check all alternative PSU offerings uh, in on hwbusters.com, we have the best ATX version 3.x PSUs article there. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them on the comment section of this video. You can contact us through our Discord server, we have an English channel there. And we also have a Patreon page if you want to support us. That's all. Bye bye.